local food isn't a novel idea, but I do think it's an important one. I grew up on a farm, and I found that my recipes are just simply better when I source my ingredients from someone or somewhere I'm connected to. But of course, this isn't the most convenient way to build a menu. I'm Ian Knauer, and today I am charged up to be back at Wybrook Farm. Wybrook is a farm that I've been following since its early days. They raise animals here, and they do it the right way. That means best practices for the animals, for the land, and for the consumers that source their meat here. Today we'll be talking with Ryan and Scott, the farmers. They're going to show us how they do it the right way. And then we'll be talking with Alexi, the in-house butcher. We're going to do some whole animal butchery, focusing on a pork shoulder that I'm then going to grill over an open flame. We'll find some local eggplant, bury that in the coals, and make a sauce for that pork. Let's get started. Scott, tell me a little bit about your day-to-day -day here on the farm. The day-to-day here on the farm here, uh, I help out Ryan, who is uh, the full-time farm manager here. Um, I'm also big into horticulture, so I take care of the landscape as well as the trees and the wood, wooded areas, as well as do a lot of the hay production as well. So well, that's a lot to keep you busy. It keeps me busy. Yeah, I wow. It. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the animals that you, that you raise here. Uh, we raise the pork and as well as the beef. Um, and we keep them grass fed, but uh, we also uh, mix grain with it. Um, at the very most, they get about 4% of their diet throughout their entire life uh, of grain. And we work with a local brewery and we mix their spent grains with, uh, with our feed. So people who live around here get to come here and see where their food is raised. Correct. That is very cool. And if they have a question, they can ask the farmer or the butcher. So, <laughs> very you know, cool. So, yep. Speaking of which, let's go find Ryan so we can take a look at those pigs. Sounds great. All right. operations here at the farm um, mainly include uh, taking care of the animals uh, we have beef and pork uh, which are cows and pigs uh, we have basically 50 producing cows uh, and at any given time have uh, roughly around 25 to 35 hogs on the property um, the on the cattle side of things uh, basically we uh, run a rotational grazing facility so we try to move the cows every day as much as possible and on the uh, pig side of things it involves daily feeding uh, and checking their waters and things like that. Yeah what does the farm mean to me? Uh, it is a special place. Uh, I mean the, the views basically sell themselves. Um, the animal welfare aspect of it, of everything being outside and free to roam uh, it, it means a lot. Also, the ability to tell our story uh, and have anyone be involved that wants to come and see what we're doing, uh, I think that's the fun part of it. Scott, Ryan, here we are with the pigs. They have a lot of room to roam around here. What does that have to do with how they're raised and you know, raising them the right way? Well, really what it comes down to is uh, taking them back to their natural setting and uh, uh, one of our number one points here at Wybrook is uh, animal welfare and so yeah it's uh, going back to the basics again essentially and you know we are farming but we're not a factory and they're able to enjoy their life. They seem like really happy pigs. They're happy pigs. <laughs> I'm here with Alexi, the in-house butcher at Wybrook Farm, and we're gonna talk about the ancient craft of seam cutting and whole animal butchery. We're gonna go over the different cuts of meat, which look very different than conventional butchering, so that you know which questions to ask when you visit your butcher. Let's get started. First of all, tell me a little bit about seam cutting. I, I don't see a bandsaw in here. It's very different than conventional butchering, isn't it? Yes. Although I do like a bandsaw, seam cutting tends to be more of an artistic. And what does that mean exactly, seam cutting? So the seam cutting itself will be, as you'll see, is we'll be going in between each muscle. Um, a lot of conventional and or bandsaw work will just cut straight through muscle and bone. Here we'll be deboning things, uh, leaving as much meat as possible, and also going in between the muscles, and you'll see uh, the seam on there. What I love about what you do 
uh, at Wybrook, you take this ancient craft and you take these cuts of meat that are so flavorful. You apply the craft to it so that we can have this ton of flavor cooked in a really special way that then brings the community in and they get to taste meat that you can't get anywhere else. You can't get this at the grocery store. So thank you for, for showing me your craft um, and for making this farm and what you do so special. Clearly, I have my work cut out for me, so I need to get in the kitchen and I'm looking forward to eating this. I'm gonna cook this pork shoulder right over a live fire and I'm gonna bury some eggplant from Full Circle CSA in the coals. Then we're gonna chop it up, season it, and have a real feast. First, I need to fix that fire. I'm gonna take these eggplant and bury them right in the coals. I'm gonna take some of those coals and scoot them up and around the eggplant so that they cook a little more evenly. And then I'll come back in about 10 minutes and turn these around so that they cook from both sides. I'm gonna take this grill grate and move it directly over the fire so it's gonna get nice and hot. Now I'm gonna marinate our pork. Sometimes if it were a little thicker, I might pound it to this thinness, but this is absolutely perfect. It's about an inch and a half thick. So now I just need to marinate it. First, salt. I'm gonna pretty aggressively season this. And that seasoning, that salt is gonna bring out the flavor of that muscle. Remember, this is the shoulder up here, and it had a lot, got a lot of exercise, so it's gonna be really flavorful meat. Now I'm gonna add some garlic and rosemary from Full Circle CSA. Again, pretty aggressive with the seasoning on this recipe. Eight, maybe 10 cloves of garlic. All right, my favorite way to get through a lot of garlic is to smash first, and then do a rough chop over everything. Keep on chopping. We're gonna add some rosemary to the garlic. The garlic is sort of coarsely chopped right now. So I'll just add the rosemary right on top and keep chopping. The magic of this recipe has yet to happen. Right here, I have some rendered pork lard, maybe from this pig, maybe from another one from Wybrook. And I'm gonna take this garlic rosemary mixture and mix it into that pork lard. Now, of course, if we were cooking this in Italy, we'd be using olive oil, but we're not in Italy. We're here in Pennsylvania, and the pigs grow really well, but the olives don't. So we're using the rendered lard as the fat in this recipe. All right, now it's time to get this onto the fire. I'm gonna rotate these eggplant. And here we go. Now this needs maybe 15 or 20 minutes to cook to the point where we're gonna take it off the grill. This looks exactly how we want it. Nice and caramelized on the outside, and it's still gonna be kind of pink on the inside, which for meat this quality is just perfect. My eggplant are done too. They're so tender that they're just sort of collapsing on themselves. So I'm gonna put those right there. So first I'm gonna deal with these eggplant. They're charred on the outside and there's even some ash, but that's okay because we're gonna get rid of that skin. We don't need it. What we're after is that really soft flesh on the inside. You can see that skin just peels away. I can just throw it into the fire. And what we've got is this really tender flesh from this eggplant. And then I'm gonna chop the flesh of the eggplant into chunks. You can see how tender that is. My knife just goes right through it. All right, I've got that all piled up. Now I need to season it. Some salt, a little vinegar, 
And I'm using apple cider vinegar. Whatever you have is fine. And then, because we're here at Wybrook, I've got some rendered pork fat. And that's just gonna act like olive oil would and just add another layer of richness. So we're just gonna chop all that together, stir it in. Season again. I'm gonna taste a little bit just to make sure that I've got my seasoning right. Cooking with all your senses is the best way to do it. Recipes are just a jumping off point. They're just a template. They're just an idea. But if you can taste and smell and listen, not only to the recipe itself, but to the ingredients, you know, find that eggplant from the farm, from your local farmer's market and feel it. If it feels firm like a softball, it's perfect. Which again, if you don't have really fresh eggplant, you don't even think of it as a fruit, but that's what it is. All right, I'm gonna put that on my platter. We're gonna give our pork a couple more minutes to rest. And then we're gonna slice that pork, serve it right on top of this eggplant. So I'm gonna swap out my cutting boards because it's time to slice this pork. Been resting for not quite 10 minutes, which is perfect for a meat this thickness. The smaller the piece of meat, the less time it has to rest, the larger, the more time it has to rest. So I'm gonna cut this against the grain, just make thin slices. Mmm, super juicy and still that nice color pink inside. Then I'm gonna put this pork right on top of the eggplant. Now the last step, I'm gonna scatter some fresh herbs from Nathan from Tiny and Toyo Farm. Some basil, and some fresh dill, which is one of my favorite herbs. I think it goes a little undersung. This dish is hyper-seasonal. The eggplant are perfectly ripe. The herbs are as fresh as they can be. The pork, of course, has grown all winter and now it's ready to eat. You can't eat like this unless you're sourcing your ingredients from local farms. Ooh, that tastes like a real pig. This has been an amazing day at Wybrook Farm. The thing that we can learn, that I can personally learn from a farm like this, is that everything is grown, raised, butchered in-house. This is what food from here tastes like, and it's better, and you can't find it anywhere else. Being a member of this community is better because of farms like Wybrook. When visiting local Pennsylvania farms to gather ingredients for my seasonal menu, it's become very clear that it doesn't matter if the ideas that influence my cooking are novel, and they're certainly not convenient. The food just has to be good. So I set out to find some good farms producing good food by good people.